Hi there, Imga. Very happy to see that you've written more essays. Let's take a look at what you did here in this topic. Uh, growing trend of private car ownership. Do the benefits outweigh the disadvantages? Here's what you said. Experts throughout both the developing and developed world have debated whether the advantages of individual car ownership outweigh the disadvantages or not over the last few decades. Um, okay, okay. Um, it's fine. It's fine. I'm thinking that maybe I would have liked the last few decades in a different place in this sentence. Um, you could have said, for example, over the last few decades, experts, etc., etc., etc. Um, let's see, where else could you have put it? Experts throughout both the developing and developed world have debated over the last few decades whether, etc., etc., etc. Um... Because you know what happens, the way you've put it here, it almost sounds as if you're saying the advantages of individual car ownership on the one side, okay, outweigh the disadvantages over the last few decades. Do you understand? So there's something about this placement that's a little awkward. It's not wrong exactly, but there is some awkwardness to it. Okay, moving on. Some believe that there are no significant problems associated with uh, the increase or an increase. You do need an article here in private cars. However, personally, I strongly disagree. This essay will argue both the advantages and disadvantages of car ownership using examples from the UK government and Oxford University to demonstrate points and prove argument. Okay, lovely. It's clear you've, you are supposed to discuss both of them, the, the benefits and the disadvantages. Okay, uh, so I'm glad you said that you will. I'm glad that you have provided your position here. So it's a, a good um, introduction. Okay, moving along. On the one hand, there is ample evidence that the number of cars used in the area is, uh, is in direct correlation or has a direct correlation with the rate of air pollution. The central reason behind this is the fossil fuels Mm. The central reason behind this is that the fossil fuels which are used in almost all cars, comma, if we exclude the electric charged models, are the ultimate source for the, not the over, for the excessive, I think this is what you're trying to say, CO2 in the atmosphere. For example, recent empirical research by the UK government demonstrated that 60% of all marketed automobiles in the UK have high carbon emission rates when assessed according to world, the World Health Organization standards. It must not be forgotten that although engineers are working for better results in terms of fossil fuel usage, it cannot be compared with the clean energies such as wind or sun. Full stop, don't forget that. Therefore, it is conclusively clear that if the individual automobile usage continues gaining in popularity, there would be more severe implications for the world. On the other hand, it should not be neglected that owning a private car brings a lot of comfort to the owner, especially here. Can you please use some commas? A little more comma. So comma, especially in major cities. This is largely because the cities are bigger than they used to be. So first of all, let's remove the word the, because we're not talking just about specific cities that you have already mentioned. I think you're talking in general about cities. So this should be no the and then it's they because the they refers back to cities. So it should read this is largely because cities are bigger than they used to be and automobiles are considered an, uh, as a necessity. Yeah, I prefer it without the as. Are considered a necessity in the modern day world, comma, especially if public transportation options are not widely developed. For instance, an extensive study by Oxford University showed that over 50% of commuters prefer to use their private cars instead of public transportation options, even if the transportation uh, is assessed as above world standards. I think this is what you're trying to say, right? Furthermore, nowadays cars are more affordable than decades ago, which led to, mm, which has led to an increase in automobile ownership. Thus, it is possible 
to state beyond doubt that people choose to use their private cars in order to have comfort and privacy. Okay, I have to be honest with you. I don't understand this sentence. Um, and then I don't understand here what you're talking about privacy. So, for example, you've said that it's important to have a car, uh, especially if public transport is poor. And then you gave me this, um, which is fine. But I really didn't understand this. So it led to automobile ownership. Okay, and? So basically you said that they're more affordable. Um, so now I don't understand. Is that supposed to be one of the the benefits? It, no, it can't possibly be. And then in your conclusion statement here, you talk about privacy. Uh, so I'm curious, am I supposed to understand somehow that this leads to privacy. Basically what's happening here, Imge, is that um, this kind of confusion uh, is something that would affect your task achievement and your coherence and cohesion score. Uh, task achievement because your ideas are not um, sufficiently well supported and coherence and cohesion because there's not a logical connection between your sentences. Okay, so you have to be really careful about um, an error like this. Okay, and now for your conclusion, although using a private car has its own advantages, there are enormous benefits to be gained with using public transportation more often. From the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that disadvantages of car ownership outweigh, not overweight. Overweight is somebody heavy um, who weighs too much, okay? So outweigh, with no T, is the word you want. The advantages and it is predicted that alternative transportation methods will increasingly grow in importance in near future. Okay, this is fine. There is one problem though. Um, apart from the problem that I mentioned with this paragraph and this confusion that I had in the latter part of the paragraph, there's another problem with the order of your paragraphs. Since you are in favor of this paragraph, this needs to go last, it needs to go closer to conclusion. We always talk about the side that we disagree with and then we talk about the side that we do agree with, keeping it closer to our, par our conclusion so that they're better uh, linked, okay? Um, the grammar was good, the vocabulary was good. There were just some things happening uh, with some articles, which I do want you to be careful for, especially if you are aiming for a higher band score, you do have to make sure that there's um, considerable accuracy with your articles. So I want you to be aware of that and fix any kind of errors that you might have there. Um, but the vocabulary was rather nice, okay? Let's move on to your second essay. Okay, here it is. It's your letter. It's a uh, cover letter. Okay, you have three things to talk about, so let's see how you did with that. Dear Sir, Madam, I'm writing a response to the advert for a medical manager in LinkedIn website. I am a skilled and dynamic medical manager with an extensive, you don't know, and knowledge is uncountable so you can't use an article. So with extensive knowledge in clinical research area. Uh, in the clinical research area or in clinical research areas? I started my career as a clinical research associate in, not on, in 2008 and moved ED to medical affairs in 2011. Since then, I have been assigned with different roles such as regional medical manager and medical manager. Um, in addition, that's missing here, to my experience in those areas, I also hold a master's degree in pharmaeconomics, pharmacoeconomics, and pharmacoepidemiology. Since I fulfill the requirements that you listed uh, in the advert, I consider myself as a good candidate. People around me assess. Uh, people around me assess me, but that still doesn't work. People. Uh, also, you know what else is the problem here? I'm get it's a little informal. People around me assess me as an energetic. So I'm not really crazy about that. Um, you could. Um, you could use the word describe and said that would work. So you could say, uh, colleagues and supervisors describe me as very energetic and dynamic. That's a nicer way to say it, okay? Not just the people around you, but specifically your colleagues and supervisors. I approach every assignment and project with the same enthusiasm. Hence, I would start my new role with 
great motivation, no A. You could have you could have developed this more. If you're looking to get a higher band score, I want a little more. All right. So in other words, uh, I would start my role with new with a great motivation. Oh, really? How? Okay. So that's the kind of thing. Um, a hiring manager would want to see specifics. So tell me an example of maybe, for example, a change you made at your previous job. Uh, and you could say this is the kind of um, initiative and proactive behavior I display on my job and I am sure that I could bring better, better results to your company or something like that. Okay, this kind of language. So develop this a little more. And the reason I chose your company is the trust. Uh, this is awkward too. It feels like a translation. So the reason I chose your company is the, uh, let's see, trust. It inspires in me with its long-standing background and the role attracted me due to the area which medical manager would be responsible. Okay, the grammar here is really problematic. Um, not, it's grammar and vocabulary in this section because I feel like um, you're using the wrong words and the grammar makes it really unclear. So uh, let's try it one more time. The reason I chose your company is uh, the trust that it inspires in me with its long-standing uh, background and the particular role attracted me um, because of the areas of its responsibility. Okay, that might be a better way of saying this. Please find my curriculum vitae attached for your information. I look forward to hearing from you, yours faithfully. Okay, so this is a correct opening. This is correct. This is absolutely correct. Um, I already told you the grammar and the vocabulary is problematic here. Here I wanted a little more development that would affect your uh, task achievement score. And um, here I think I gave you my feedback in terms of uh, some grammar and some vocabulary. All right, it's a nice effort. Um, I think that there are uh, a lot of consistent errors that would keep it from getting a higher score, okay? Um, so what you need to do now then is correct it and uh, don't forget to your, add your error correction list so you can learn from these mistakes and avoid repeating them in the future. And of course your new essays will be waiting for them, okay? So good luck with your writing assignment and I look forward to seeing your next set.